So I'm here today to share a personal story. Um, a story that will hopefully not only change the general, uh, general narrative, but also your personal perspective on a topic that is not very popular, commonly spoken about, and generally very stigmatized. So, um, if you could just please have a very good look at me, and then close your eyes for a couple of moments just to let that sink in. Okay, thank you. You can open your eyes again. And I'd like you to just reflect on that first impression. And later on, we'll get back to this and you'll understand why I wanted to start off with this little exercise. So now please imagine that you are a physiotherapist seeing me for an appointment. Or maybe um, a manicurist who's going to do my nails. Or someone potentially going out on a date with me. Now you might wonder, what do these three different settings have in common? I can tell you that in all three scenarios, I've had a horrible response to me sharing something personal that I chose proudly not to be ashamed about. Now, you might be wondering, what did I say? Did I tell them that I am a professional hit woman? <laughs> Maybe a convicted felon? Luckily, none of that is the case. As just um, uh, told in the introduction, I am a yoga and Qigong practitioner. I'm a fashion management consultant. I'm a model. I make documentaries. And I love speaking publicly to educate others. However, what I did tell them is that I am HIV positive. And that apparently came across as so appalling that they left me, and I did not get the treatment that I came for or the date that I was looking forward to, which left me flabbergasted. So, the reason why I am sharing this story is because um, what people living with HIV live with, or, or nowadays are more confronted with, is not so much living with the virus, but actually the stigmatization involved around it. So what does that actually mean, stigmatization? So to stigmatize is to describe or regard someone or something as worthy of disgrace or of great disapproval. And what are the effects of being stigmatized. So when, for example, your HIV, you internalize that as self-stigma, that can actually lead to feelings of isolation, fear of rejection, fear of sharing your status, of disclosing that, and just, you know, being ashamed and hiding out. And those are horrible feelings. And it's not only those people that are living with HIV, but also people who are at high risk of potentially contracting HIV, who face stigmatization. Um, so basically, from the early onset of the 1980s, um, HIV and AIDS has always been associated with gay men, prostitution, drug abuse, poverty, ill health, death, just a lot of negative things which created fear. And it is that fear that has led to the stigmatization. And what a lot of people don't know is that actually youth or people under 24 and women are two of the main groups that are at a very, very high risk of contracting HIV. And why is that? So basically, the fact that they are vulnerable, they have a more vulnerable position in society, they will actually face more 
discrimination and stigmatization also because of that. And a lot of people don't know that there are actually more than 20 million women and girls living with HIV worldwide nowadays. So, just to make sure that we're, you have an understanding that we're all on the same page here, what we're talking about. Um, for me, it's my work, um, but just to test the grounds here, okay? Um, anybody here know the difference between HIV and AIDS? Not too bad, just to make sure. So, HIV is an abbreviation, and it stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Whereas AIDS, on the other hand, stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. And where HIV is, I'm sorry, AIDS is the last stage of an HIV infection when it's left untreated. And the body does not have the immune, the, the, the immune response to fight off just any kind of general infections. And the difference of how you can contract HIV and uh, or how you can and cannot con uh, contract it is basically HIV can be tra transmitted via blood, semen, breast milk, and vaginal or rectal fluids. However, HIV cannot be transmitted by general day-to-day -day contact situations, kissing, hugging, sharing a drink, sharing food, or a personal objects. Um, my next slide is keeping me on track here. <laughs> and I have the Swiss flag standing out here because I want to take my talk to the next level. And that is where we are nowadays. Whereas, um, uh, the, the, the message has always been of practicing safe sex, and it is a little bit confusing that nowadays people who are living with HIV can actually um, not pass on the virus to other people anymore because of their virus being suppressed by medication. And these medications are called antiretroviral therapy, okay? ARTs. Um, um, so, Whereas in the early onset, without the medication, so many people died. Nowadays, HIV is a very well-treatable um, infection that you can live a very long and healthy life with. Um, it's just that, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that. And in January of 2008, these Swiss scientists already proved, and they came out in a statement called the Swiss Statement, where they, after years of research, and this has been published in medical journals like The Lancet, um, that HIV cannot be transmitted to their sexual partners as long as the HIV negative uh, positive person is on their ARTs and the virus is successfully suppressed. Now, this is in 2008. And I can tell you that back in the day, that did not go down very well with the general public because the message has always been to practice safe sex. So, in my life, I actually, so what is it actually like to be living with HIV? Um, I can share you some personal experiences of being open about my status. Um, I've been ghosted on multiple dates um, after disclosing my status without ever having a chance to get to know them better. Um, I've actually been kicked out of an ex-lover's, um, we were on holiday together, and I've been kicked out of their house as soon as the father discovered that we had become more than just friends. I've had a very close friend of mine call me out for being a loaded weapon and for not walking my talk when I shared this information with her that I can actually practice safe sex with my partner, with, um, uh, and safe in that sense being that I, not, I don't have to use a condom nowadays anymore and not be a risk of transmitting the virus onto my partner. So I know it sounds a little bit confusing because I know I've mentioned that HIV is transmitted via sex, 
But this Swiss statement was the beginning of an ongoing research. And from 2008 until 2018, 10 years long of multiple huge studies confirmed the proof that the rest of the world needed to finally accept this message. And this has led to what we now know nowadays as the You is You campaign. So, undetectable equals untransmittable, which means that if your virus is, if you're on ARTs and the virus is not uh, found in your blood, in your system anymore, you cannot transmit it onto your sexual partners. Now, this is a huge game changer, you know. Um, it empowers people who are living with HIV to not feel ashamed, to not be lacking out on social activities because they've been hiding out because of fear of being rejected and sharing their status. And I can tell you as well, um, for me personally, it really, really has taken a huge weight off of my shoulders. And working in the field of HIV and AIDS, I, I work for various nonprofit organizations. I've actually seen countless friends and colleagues coming out of their fear-ridden hiding because they can now finally feel more confident in their skin and participate in social activities or going back out into the dating world or whatever because it is just very liberating to not to know that you don't have to be a threat to somebody else. And it's not just that self-stigma, but it's also the stigma of what the rest of the world puts upon us. So, before I round actually up, I would like to go back and share you um, another personal story of mine, which is back in 2006, when I was in hospital and I had just gotten my diagnosis of the acute HIV infection. And the first things that ran through my mind were, am I going to die? Apparently, I wasn't very well informed. And this is 2006, that medication has already been on the market since 1996. I knew about that, but it didn't. I just thought, I'm going to die. And then I thought, will I still be able to have children? I was 32 at the time. And then I thought, how am I going to tell my friends and my family even worse, you know, how are they going to respond? And then the other question, how did I get this? I mean, I just had a new boyfriend since a month, but I actually had a full STD test done a month before that, including HIV, and that all came back negative. So how could this happen to me? And this is exactly what I was thinking. How could this happen to me? I mean, as if being a white, European, well-educated, had a good job, well-dressed, not so bad-looking, well-traveled, etc., as if all of that would protect me from being at risk of contracting HIV? That was very confrontational, but it is also an example of why I am sharing my message and what I hope that you guys take home from my story today. So, to round up uh, the recommendations and, and conclusions, I really hope that you realize that you cannot judge a book by its cover. Number two, Get tested because there is nothing to fear. And stigma number three is only based on lack of information and ignorance. So my recommendations based on that is make sure that you're informed. Share that knowledge. Knowledge is power. Don't be scared of getting tested. There really is nothing to fear. And also, please realize that it is not the people 
who are living with HIV and that know their status and therefore are on treatment that are passing the virus on. It are, it's the people that don't know that, they're, that they actually carry the virus, the people that don't get tested, or the people that don't have access to treatment. So, just make sure you realize another thing. HIV, just like any other virus, does not discriminate. It doesn't discriminate on your age, your skin color, your religion, your sexual preference, your income, your postal code, any of that. HIV does not discriminate. So please don't stigmatize people living with HIV either. Thank you.